Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. My intros are getting worse and worse. Never mind. In today's video, we are going to talk about a new integration technique. Whoa, that sounds great. Um, it's not really new. We are just going to talk about dummy variables. That's a really useful thing and I'm using it so often when doing integration. Back when I made a video about this weird integral involving all those square roots of trigonometric functions, link in the description, you should check it out, it's a great one. Um, many people were struggling with the idea of dummy variables. They didn't know where this came from, why this original integral was the same as the integral we've got after substituting everything and why we could add them together. So let's clear this up today. So, just for the sake of demonstration, we are going to say this integral is just this integral right here. So we are going to change this x to a t, for example. So, I hope you agree with me that, that we can do this. And listen and repeat, this x and this t are just names. They are basically the same thing. They are just names. So, keep this in mind. It doesn't matter if there's a dog, a tree, a circle, a triangle or your mother. It really doesn't matter. It's just a name for the same thing. Okay, and now we are going to introduce our new dummy variable. That's an interesting concept. So we are now substituting something. So let t equal to a plus b minus x. You will see why I'm using x now, just to make things clear. <laughs> Okay, now when we differentiate that, that would mean that dt is equal to minus dx. And now we can plug this new substitution into here. So let's see what we get. Now we get a new integral. So what are our lower and upper bounds? So if we plug a into this t, um, we want to somehow make this fit on this side. So how can we make this fit? Well. Our a's would cancel out, we can sub subtract a on both sides and that would mean that b minus x is equal to zero, so x would equal to b. So b is our lower limit and if we plug b into here, th the same process, we would ga get a as the upper bound. Okay, and now we plug our new information in. So now it's f of a plus b minus x times minus dx. We can bring this minus to the front and we can distribute this minus into this integral. What does that mean? We can change the upper and lower bound. We can change the order. So what we end up with is just the integral from a to b of f of a plus b minus x dx. And once again, this is just a name. So this integral right here is equal to this integral right here. So this is i and this is also i. And that's the concept of dummy variables. Don't get confused by, this names, by those names. They are the same. And we are going to ab apply this now. So I'm using this pretty often. Um, I'm going to make more videos on Putnam Exum integrals. And we are using this idea pretty often. And well, let's show you something special. I'm going to show you that a symmetric integral, so from minus a to a, of an odd function is always zero. So I came up with this a few days ago and working around with, with this idea and I think that it's pretty great. So let's prove something with this video. So let f of x be odd. And what's the property of an odd function? So this is equivalent to the fact that f of minus x equals to minus f of x. Okay, and now we are going to use this great fact right here. So let's just assume that i equals to the integral from minus a to a. We want to show this on the symmetric integral of f of x dx. And now we are using the fact of this dummy variable right here. We can make this equal to this integral right here. So this is now the integral from minus a to a of f of a plus minus a minus x dx. But a minus a is just zero. So what we end up with is just the integral from minus a to a of 
f of minus x dx. And I want you guys to remember, this is just a name. So this is still equal to i. Substitution is an equivalent process. So you start off with something and you end up with something, but it's the same thing, it's still i. So what can we do? We can add those i's together. So we can add this integral to this integral right here. So let's do this really quick. So that means i plus i is indeed just 2i. But what is 2i? It's the integral from minus a to a of f of x dx plus the integral from minus a to a of f of minus x dx. And the greatest thing is that they have the same upper and lower bounds. So we can use the, linear, the linearity of the integral and bring those together. So this is now equal to whoop, whoop, the integral from minus a to a of f of x plus f of minus x dx. And now we are going to use the fact that this function is indeed an odd function. So by the oddity of this function right here, we end up with the integral from minus a to a of f of x minus f of x dx. And well, f of x minus f of x is indeed just zero. And if we sum a lot of zeros up, this will still just be zero. So when our integrand is zero, we end up with a zero. And now we can divide both sides by two because two isn't equal to zero and what we end up with is the fact that i equals to zero. And this holds for all odd functions. So I hope this proof is true. <laughs> I came up with it like two days ago, but well, I really like this. So now you also know that over a symmetric integral, any odd function is just zero. So that was a great one, I guess. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and recommend me if you like. And up until the next video, have a flammable day. And thanks to all my Patreon supporters. If you also want to support me, there's a link in the description. Have a flammable day. See ya.